UHF, the movie that brought us the unholy wonders of the Twinkie Wiener Sandwich. <laughs> if you want to see some crazy folks eat this concoction, check out this video by my friends over at Reckless Eating. Godspeed, you brave souls. After a series of successful parody albums, Weird Al Yankovic and his manager, Jay Levy, started toying with the idea of making a movie. They had various ideas, but settled on the concept of running a low-budget TV station and doing parodies of classic shows. They shopped the idea around for two years until it was picked up by Orion Pictures. Now that the movie was greenlit, Al had to turn down the offer to open for Michael Jackson's world tour. The studio gave them a $5 million budget, and they moved ahead with casting. Weird Al played the main character, George Newman, which was an homage to Mad Magazine's Alfred E. Newman. Uncle Nutsy was also an homage to Mad. Al credited the magazine for his warped sense of humor. R.J. Fletcher Jr. was originally Jim J. Bullock, but he backed out and they got John Paragon. Paragon's probably best known as Jombie from the Pee Wee Herman show. Ellen DeGeneres and Jennifer Tilly both tried out for the role of Terry, which ended up going to Victoria Jackson. The role of Philo was originally offered to Joel Hodgson, who turned it down because he was burned out on TV. Shortly thereafter, he created the long-running series Mystery Science Theater 3000. They hired Michael Richards as Stanley Spidowski and gave him oversized fake teeth to wear the entire movie. Also, a large part of his dialogue was ad-libbed. Tastes like poop. They wanted Crispin Glover, but he said he'd only do the film if he played Crazy Ernie. They shot the movie over eight weeks in 1988 in Tulsa, Oklahoma. There was a mall being built, and they rented out the unused portions to build the interior sets. The movie was filled with parodies and spoofs of everything from Raiders of the Lost Ark to Geraldo to Close Encounters of the Third Kind. Dr. Domeno, the DJ who first played Weird Al on the radio, has a cameo as an audience member. The Rambo outfit was made by Greg Nicotero of k and Effects. The guy standing at the helicopter rides booth was originally supposed to be Sylvester Stallone in a cameo, but due to a scheduling conflict, he couldn't do it. The Wheel of Fish segment was done with real fish. After hours of shooting under hot lights in a warehouse with no air conditioning, the fish stunk up the place and many of the crew wore nose plugs. There were a lot of parodies they wanted to put in the movie, like a Flintstones one, but they opted not to. The movie had a threadbare plot as it was, and incorporating more parodies just weighed the whole thing down. The movie was dedicated to Trinidad Silva, who played Raul. While production was underway, he was killed by a drunk driver. They had more scenes for his character, but decided to leave them out, rather than do them with a double, or cast another actor. The tiny car Al drives is a 1956 Nash Metropolitan. He drives his car again in the video for It's All About the Pentiums. A very popular segment in the movie is the commercial for Spatula City. They ran a billboard and ran the fake ad to be filmed in the movie. No one rented the billboard for months afterwards. So the fake ad stayed up, which confused the people who saw it. Weird Al still gets spatulas sent to him by his fans. Philo's transformation at the end was done by the Chiodo brothers, who did Killer Clowns from Outer Space, as well as the Large Marge transformation in Pee-wee's Big Adventure. The actor playing Gandhi is director Jay Levy. The music they used was a little too close to the theme of Shaft, and they were almost sued for it. And this time, he's mad. Gandhi 2. It's rumored that Mike Judge is a fan of the movie, and the burger world in Beavis and Butthead is an homage to the one in UHF. They were shooting for a PG rating, but the shop teacher scene, the guy getting cut in half, and Raul throwing poodles out the window, got them a PG-13. When they finished filming, Orion was in financial trouble. Even though Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure was a huge hit, Speed Zone, Lost Angels, and Great Balls of Fire were flops that put the studio in a bad position. The original cut of UHF was two and a half hours long, but they cut it down to 90 minutes. Al said it was for the best, because that hour that was cut out was just unfunny jokes that didn't go anywhere. The original title of the film was The Vidiot, but Orion insisted on calling it UHF. Although for the international market, where UHF wasn't common, they changed the name to The Vidiot from UHF, which did nothing but confuse people. Orion screened the movie for test audiences, and it had the highest scores since the studio's biggest hit, Robocop. Thinking this would be the movie to pull them out of their financial problems, they set it to be released on July 21st, 1989. Little did they know they were dropping it right in the middle of one of the biggest summers in movie history. It opened up against Lethal Weapon 2, Batman, When Harry Met Sally, Honey I Shrunk the Kids, License to Kill, Dead Poets Society, Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade, Ghostbusters 2, and Weekend at Bernie's. With that kind of competition, it's no surprise the movie opened in 11th place. After two weeks, the movie was pulled from theaters. When the movie hit VHS, it quickly became a cult classic. 
Unfortunately, Orion went bankrupt not too long after, so it became increasingly difficult to find a copy of the movie. Now here we are, 26 years later. Last year, the film had a special 25th anniversary Blu-ray released. They also re-released the long out of print, The Complete Owl. UHF is the kind of parody movie that they just don't make anymore. Instead of something genuinely funny with spoofs that make sense, we get movies like Vampires Suck and Meet the Spartans. UHF was clever, funny, and had its heart in the right place. It was just a victim of bad timing. While it has plenty of fans now, it took a long time to get them. Weird Al's career is as big as ever. Last year he had his first album open at number one on the Billboard charts, and continues to have sold out concerts. He's talked about a sequel, but much like how UHF channels are no longer relevant, a follow-up to a movie that flopped 25 years ago might not be the best idea. Besides, the place where they filmed the exteriors, the U62, is now a parking lot. I want a UHF sequel, and I know a lot of other people do too. But sometimes, it's best to leave certain things buried. mocks him and laughs at him as he's repeatedly crushed and maimed. Hope you enjoy it! <laughs>